Hey, Heidi here, and I am excited. I have Judy, Susie, and Amy, and we are going to be talking all things about paint parties and paint party success. And I'm excited because a lot of times people think that you have to have done, you know, 50 million paint parties to be successful at this. And sometimes people have just started their paint parties. So I know that um, Judy has some interesting paint parties recently that we've seen that has to do with plants. Is that correct? I've done some with plants. I just did a bus trip. So yeah, I'll be happy to talk about that. That's awesome. So what we're going to do over the next 30 minutes or so, and feel free to ask questions if you have questions for Judy, Susie, or Amy about their paint party businesses. But what we're going to do is just kind of share um, paint party success. I know a lot of times you can just be like, well, Heidi, it's easy for you. You've been teaching paint parties for 16 years, but I know we have all different skill levels inside of paint party headquarters. So um, Susie, if you want to start um, first, if let's see if your if your dog is is still hanging out with us. It's okay if he is. <laughs> but Susie, if you yeah. want to, did your yeah, dog? We're not, we're not good. Okay, good. Yeah, we may have dogs involved. Blue loves to come <laughs> join me on lives. He, he loves it. So if you don't mind, Susie, if you will start first and just tell us the name of your business and um, how, like, did you just get started with paint parties or kind of what's your story with that? Yeah, so I am Susie with Rocky Mountain Paint Studios. I have a mobile paint party business out of Anaconda, Montana. I've been with PPHQ for 15 months. It's been an exciting and fun ride. After six months of the business, uh, the paint party business was able to support itself and I was able to do it full time. So um, it's so that I thought that was great. And don't you have, I thought I saw in Paint Party Headquarters um, some adventure with your son. Was that you or was that somebody else? Yes, yes. So uh, the Paint Party business has really blessed me financially where I have more financial stability to visit my, um, my relatives and my son. I live in Montana. My son lives in Washington. So um, it's just been wonderful to have that freedom to take the time and spend time with friends and family. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I'm happy you're here. We're gonna come back to you and talk to you in just a minute about some more of your paint party stuff. And, and be thinking of a tip you wanna share with the viewers and everybody who is watching. Um, hi, Sherry, hi, Anna. And if y'all don't mind, if y'all have any questions for them, if you don't mind um, saying hi to Amy and Susie and Judy, um, as they come live and sharing tips, um, we would really appreciate that. Okay, so let's go on to Judy. Judy, what is the name of your paint party business and what's kind of been um, the success that you've had recently? Okay, um, so my paint parties is called Painting Parties by Judy and I'm located in central Pennsylvania. Um, I've been doing painting parties for seven years and just two years ago, I joined paint party headquarters. So it was a huge blessing to me during the COVID shutdown and going online. Um, but I haven't stayed online. I'm definitely an in-person mobile paint party person. And I am, um, I travel about an hour at the most from my home. It's a very rural area. Um, but I've had a lot of success with fundraisers. That is one of my biggest things that I do. I do about two parties a week. Um, within seven years, though, I have done over 550 painting parties. And wow. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's been, I have two teenage daughters started when they were um, like seven and 11 years old. And now they were super shy and now they could totally run it all by themselves. So it's been oh. with the family and I love it. So I love seeing your daughter because I'm like, that's me. That's we, we I've got two daughters helping out. Um, How old are your said, daughters? They are now 18 and 16. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Love it. So they've been helping the past six years. They have. Yeah. They didn't start at the very beginning. I didn't envision my children helping, but the ladies at the paint party adore them. And if they're not there, they will ask, where are your daughters? So I have a lot of repeat customers. Um, I like to keep track of numbers and I'm kind of organized. So I know I've painted with over 13,000 projects with people and I just, I love it. Oh my gosh. So over 13,000 projects. Yeah. That is insane. And so and some of them are, are fundraisers and I know I saw something with plants. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, and a lot of our fundraisers, but I recently did a plant and paint. Um, I've done that maybe, oh, I've probably done at least 10 of those. And if you can see, oh, there's a wooden box behind me. I'll actually grab it. Let's see if everything falls down. Um, but I did a wooden box and with the wooden box, um, this is an idea with the jars, but we also put soil and succulents in them as well. And people can just customize their little patterns and their designs. And yeah, I've done that with plants and that's been a lot of fun. That is so cool, Judy. You're a rock star. That's a lot of paint parties. I love it. I just thrive on it. <laughs> Oh, uh, I always like, yeah. wish I would have like since the beginning had some kind of like little check mark of how many because I mean, yeah. it would be so cool to know now like how many people or whatever. It would just be so cool to know. But yeah, I'm not that organized. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a guest book, but I do have all my for um, hosts fill out a form. So that gives me and then I give them a receipt and on that receipt it does say exactly how many people painted so I've kind of you know I have their email that way I have all their contact information I keep keep track of my numbers too that's so cool okay so we're going to come back to you Judy so don't go anywhere and um, let's and um, thank you for sharing that let's go ahead and go to Amy now I saw something on a TV news show is that correct? Yes, I um, I recently got to go on a local. Um, uh, it was a midday. Um, what do they call those shows? Kind of like a uh, just a, a real relaxed kind of show, not real true news or anything. But I got to go on them and teach the two hosts a small bit of a paint party project. I took what my project was going to be on that next big weekend and I made it into a small eight by 10 that they could manage in a small time slot. Yeah. When I was watching what you had posted, it looked like you were like Regis and Kelly. <laughs> like Regis and Kelly, like back in the day. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're cutting out a little bit. So I didn't completely hear what you said there. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're having a little bit of trouble on back and forth. Yeah. Hopefully you can hear this, Amy. So, Amy, what is one of your biggest tips for teaching? Biggest tip I would say um, is really uh, going back to the planning process of everything. And I would say know your people, know your crowd, and know your audience. Um, not every project that Heidi presents us is perfect for everyone. And the same thing, I create a lot of my own projects and not all of them are correct for everyone. Um, I, I give a, for instance, as several months back, I did at the beginning of the year, the word of the year art. And I knew I have a crowd of people within uh, different networking groups that read books about it and they really they developed their whole year around word of the year and i was able to book a huge private event with it was almost exclusively pampered chef consultants that all did a team building exercise with word of the year art that forevermore will be a huge project for me every year and it will be by january which is a tough month it will be the way I make my income just go crazy in January. So knowing your crowd and picking the right projects for them. That is awesome. Yeah. And I don't know why. Let me see. Maybe it'll work like, oh, I think I got the tip. I think I got the trick now, Amy. Okay. I think if I mute you and then I talk, I think it works fine. So y'all let me know in the comments. Because I can mute Amy, then talk, and then unmute Amy again. So um, any of y'all that are doing um, lives, just know sometimes you have um, you have tech issues, and it happens. And um, so that is really cool. So what you were saying is in January, every January, do you have that party now? So you don't have to worry about your January parties? Yes, absolutely. Um, they're already on my books, that specific one party which my first year of it, I had 25 people and it will just grow every year. And um, in addition, I teach that as a smaller class with my clientele, the people who aren't pampered chef consultants, and they do it one time, they get what they've done and they get the value of doing it every year. 
So I'm absolutely, without a doubt, I know I'm going to make a good January and I don't have to do much else other than the word of the year art. That is amazing, Amy. Yeah. And Linda says, know your crowd. Love that. Yeah, it's so true. I think so many times we think that everything's going to work for everybody across the board. And it's, you know, sometimes people, different things work in different areas. So you got to know your crowd, know what they want. I love that. Okay, so let's go back to Judy for a minute. And um, Judy, what, okay, so having taught 550 parties, over 13,000 projects, what is one of the um, biggest tips you can give somebody who is maybe brand new to this and they're like, uh, that seems a little overwhelming. <laughs> what could you tell them if they're wanting to start teaching paint parties? Yeah, it is okay to start small, <laughs> but when you start out, look professional. I mean, you may feel like you are shaking in your boots, but look professional. Hold your head up high. Um, wear something. I wear always wear the same flowery black apron with a bright pink flower on it. Um, and I invested a small amount of money that I got back within just a few months. I bought easels. To me, easels tell me that we're doing something that nobody else is doing, right? Because if we lay it flat on the table, it's okay. But get that easel, get them feeling confident. I got long handled brushes and my banner, like putting that banner up front. It was just a, you know, maybe less than $50 on Vistaprint. But um, all my tablecloths match, my cups match. We look good, okay? So we didn't spend a whole lot of money, but we look good. And it makes the ladies feel good. It's like they, you put those special touches in there for them and they want to come back to you because you cared about them. So. <laughs> oh, I love that. And the, the idea of just having that banner and not yeah. only does it make you feel more legit, as soon as they walk in, it feels more legit, doesn't it? Right, right. I did do a logo um, early on, which if you can, great. If not, that's okay. Uh, but that's my logo. You can kind of see it. Um, and and from there, then after the party, everyone stands next to this banner. Like every picture, everyone, if, if they can, will stand next to it and get their picture taken. And then that's just um, on Facebook. Your, your name is just going and going. Um, I always also, um, I try to take post pictures from the party like that night. That night mm -hmm. so that the energy still keeps flowing and people keep sharing and getting the word out. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really important. And I know um, Judy is doing this well. And for any of y'all that are out there teaching paint parties, if you haven't already gotten a banner to put in front of, you know, when people are walking in or signing in or for your after pictures, um, I highly recommend that. It just makes you, like she said, look professional. It just makes you look professional. It makes you look the part. Um, and then just to having those extra touches. So again, I teach you to how to have a profit every party. So if you're like, wait a minute, I can't afford easels yet, or I can't afford the banner. That's okay. Like do what you have to do to get that first party in that first practice party. But that's the great thing about, um, you know, we did the paint party calculator earlier today in the fall ball. And it's like that paint party calculator, like seriously, one party you can make with 10 people, $350 before your expenses. So there's so much possibility. And then take that and buy a sign for 50 bucks and buy a few easels on sale. And then you can look the part and look professional. So I love that, Judy. Very cool. Okay, so let's go to Susie. Susie, what is one of your big tips for having these paint parties? Like what would you tell somebody who's a little bit nervous about getting started? How would you get them out of that 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 kind of nervous energy that we all have when we start. Yeah. My top thing that um, that has really helped me out is I was focusing on what paint parties can do for others while at the same time build a nice foundation for your paint party business. Um, I love that you can gather together uh, different people with different backgrounds, um, just getting together, creating, having fun, making great memories. Um, it's a great way to build relationships in the community. Um, so I've been with this, you know, at this 15 months. And right now I'm involved with a, uh, a weekly community market. 
And um, it's nice because people are recognizing me as a paint party lady. And I've been doing well. Um, um, even with the, the market, I'm even scheduling more paint parties, uh, private parties, selling kits. Mm -hmm. And August so far, if it keeps going, it's going to be my record month. Uh -huh. And so that's exciting to me because I know fall and Christmas is going to even be um, even more so. So. Um, yeah, um, um, I, I want to share another thing that, um, a fun thing that happened recently is, um, networking, um, PPHQ is a great place to network with others. And, uh, so I became friends with one of the PPHQ sisters and she lives in Illinois and I live in Montana. And what's so cool is her sister that lives here in Montana follows my page, business page. Well, she set up a paint party in a local campground. Oh, and she's, yes, and she didn't tell the PPHQ sister till the last minute. And so that came out of networking. And so that was super fun. Um, we had 17 painters. And it was my first paint party at a campground. So. Um, that was, yeah, very exciting. That is so cool. Yeah, networking, especially, I know for those of y'all, a lot of y'all watching, if you're, if you are in Paint Party headquarters, just do hashtag PPHQ. I would love to give you a shout out. And um, I think it's pretty cool how even some of our Paint Party, I mean, I know I do this, like if there's a party that I can't physically take myself, I'll post it in the group and be like, hey, in this area, because I know there's a lot of Paint Party headquarters members close to my area and so i'm like hey i can't do this one do you want it you know and and we share that way too you know so it's kind of cool and um, so you talked about doing a painting at a campground i would like to start with amy and go around the circle and see the craziest place you have ever taught a paint party okay so we're going to start with amy first what is the craziest place? And if you don't have a crazy one, that's okay. But tell us one of the craziest places you've ever taught a paint party. That's really challenging for me. I have a, a studio, so I teach from my studio. And I worked in a different studio before that. Then um, I did a paint party at a little store once. And I have done it in a couple restaurants and at a church when I've done large private ones. I would say the you know the craziest is is my sister's uh, kitchen table, but it was probably not crazy because of the location. It was probably crazy because I was teaching a th a two year old and a four year old how to paint. And that was crazy. Oh yeah, that would be that would be very very intense for sure, Amy. <laughs> Those little bitty ones, they just want to grab it and do this and be done in three seconds. <laughs> Okay, so let us know in the comments the craziest place you have ever taught a paint party. Okay, so let's hear Judy. Where is your craziest place you've ever taught a paint party? Okay, so that is hard doing mobile parties. Um, we've had some crazy ones, and I love that my daughters and I like we could tell so many stories. We could write a book. I love it, and I love your I love your video of stereotypes from painting parties. We've seen them all. I love your, <laughs> I love the video. So if I can tell two real quick, um, yeah. we did a party at an old schoolhouse one time. It was a fundraiser and it was fine when we got started, but as the evening went on, it got darker and darker. And we realized there was like one or two light bulbs in the whole place for like 30 some people. And people got, had their phones out and were using their phones to paint. <laughs> I have um, actually had that happen before too, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And I've all, and I've begun to take actually clip lights along just in case for those dark light situations. Mm -hmm. um, but one more real quick. Um, I was invited to a cabin. This was actually a guy's painting party, like a teenage guy's painting party, believe it or not. And it was legit, but it was winter time on the top of a mountain. And I was driving through snow to get to this cabin and I got there safely. But when I got there, the host didn't really realize that, and the host was the mom. She didn't really realize that we needed tables. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny, but I said, I praise the Lord because I was just at a store that day and they had folding tables on sale and I bought two of them and we 
we made it work. So uh, you, I'm sure you have stories to tell. I love telling painting party stories. Oh my gosh. Didn't you, did you post about that? I feel like I read that story. I might have. I might have. I love sharing stories. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So I, I've had both of those situations. So <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I remember teaching at Farina's, this um, really cool restaurant downtown. And I was teaching there every month for a while. And I still teach there. If you saw the bunny painting recently, I taught that there. I taught the barn there just recently. It's a really cool place. They actually filmed um, 1883 there. Like Tim McGraw was in there. It was just so cool. Anyway, um, I remember outside, we were doing this really cool fall painting outside, and I just assumed they had lights. And the next thing you know, it started getting darker and darker. In the same situation, Judy, I was like, what? No. And so everybody had their cell phones yeah. out, and we were, like, trying so hard. And I remember just telling them all, like, I'll just give you all, like, the next paint party for free. Oh. You know, I was trying to do everything I could because I didn't want anybody upset. And um, it was just, oh, man, it just got darker and darker. And then I remember also teaching a volleyball team. Um, we did splatter painting across the logo of their volleyball team, like logo. Mm -hmm. And um, it was all on the floor in a volleyball, like indoor space. And so there were no tables, nothing. And so we were like just on the floor splatter painting <laughs> with like trash bags over their clothes to just make sure that nobody had ruined all their, their clothes. But I mean, just so many fun things. Oh, awesome. Okay, so let's see what Susie has. Susie, do you have any crazy places you've taught a paint party? I know you're 15 months in, but still you might have. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the craziest coincidence was back to the campground uh, paint party. Um, so uh, what they picked out to paint was a really cute wood cutout. And it was a canoe with a moose and a bear. And what the crazy coincidence of that was earlier, or actually the day before the party, they actually had moose um they sighted moose at the campground because it's called Georgetown Lake. But when you're in Montana, you never know what wildlife you will be seeing. Oh. But so, um, and then uh, the morning of the party, they actually had a bear getting in their garbages. But anyways, it was a crazy wow. coincidence that we were painting a, a moose and a bear in a canoe. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were wanting to join the paint party with you. Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would have been like, I'm out. <laughs> I don't mess around when there's bears around. Like, I don't know about that. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go around one more time. And oh my gosh, if y'all have any stories to share, please do in the comments. Um there's so many fun stories that, I mean, I know I have dozens and dozens of different crazy stories that have happened in paint parties, but so many different things. So I want y'all to let me know in the, the next, the, the final round we're going to do, if you have any, any tip that would help this person who's scared to start their paint party business. I know one of the questions was, and um, in the area I live in, there's a paint party company. Do you join a group in your area or are you your own company? So what I teach people, like I give materials in paint party headquarters to do paint parties, but, but Judy, Susie, and Amy are their own business owners. They own their own paint party business, own their own studio or their mobile business. So it's not a franchise. It's not anything like that. It's literally them owning their business and then making it what they want it to be. And um, so they're just telling you some tips and kind of some um, things that have helped them along the way. So let's start with Amy first. And then um, Amy, before you tell your tip or your final thought, tell us again where people can find you. So if they want to know more about you and then share maybe your final tip or your final thought on um, what people could do to get started in this this. Okay. Um, well, I am, uh, my studio is called Eclectica Studio and Gifts. I live in Springfield, Missouri, which happens to be the home of Brad Pitt, of course. Um, <laughs> but I uh, teach just a few miles down the road in a small town called Nixa, Missouri. And I teach in a variety shop. And um, it has evolved into being more of an art um, store where people can come and buy art that is finished. 
Um, and that's what I would say probably what helped me grow the quickest is I got, uh, met the right people and I got associated with the right people. So that art shop that is helping me so much with the growth, what they all market for me, we market for each other. Uh, in addition to that, um, I do a lot of networking. I've joined groups. I go to mixers. There's not a lot of people, even in Springfield, Missouri, which is a large community. There's not a lot of people here who are doing this and getting out there and getting their name out there. Uh, and like I said, I got on TV because of that, because I'm out there and I'm getting my name out there. And um, that's the biggest hint I'd say, get your name out there. Um, social media will do some for you, but there's nothing better than getting your business card into someone's hand. Oh, I, love that. I think too, a lot of times we forget, the, we forget the power of just like word of mouth networking. We forget the power of that because we have been so much has been online, especially since COVID. It's like, you know, you're either online or, or you're, you know, you're, you're missing the boat. And I think a lot of times that, um, seriously, it's, it's about, you know, meeting people and people are going to refer you and they're going to know you're the paint party lady in town, you know, and they're going to start referring you. And then you're going to get to do a, a, a painting with Brad Pitt and his family. And you're going to have to invite me to so be a part of this. Like there's, a, there's a whole thing that's going to happen, Amy, that we got to make, <laughs> that we got to make happen. <laughs> Okay. They'll definitely use those connections of getting to Brad Pitt one way or another. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to, we're going to one way or another get there. So, um, so thank you for sharing that, Amy. That's so important. And um, not only getting your name out there on social media, but networking and um, meeting up with people, joining the chamber of commerce, all those things that you can do to where you're in front of people and they know to refer you. Um, a lot of times when you're in this business for, you know, several years, and I know Susie, especially you are going to start to reap the benefits of this. When you start, you know, getting in there for several years and um, your customers who booked you last year for their holiday party are going to immediately book you again. You know, it's so cool how it starts to work. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have to, to go out there and, and try to meet so many new people because I've already formed these connections and I've already gone out and do, done these really cool parties. So so let's go to um let's go to Judy next. And Judy, if you want to share um just a, you know first off share the, how they can get a hold of you if they're interested in learning more where you're doing your paint parties at because I know people are watching this from all over. And then share maybe a final thought or a tip for that person who's new and is terrified, but they want to do this so bad. Yeah. Okay, sure. So again, it's Painting Parties by Judy on Facebook and PaintingPartiesByJudy.com. So I did get a website early on, just a very inexpensive one that was super easy to build. But it was a, it's a great way for my hosts to see what dates do I have available? What canvases can they choose from? Um, so uh, that, that's a way that people can get a hold of me. I love Facebook. It's doing really well for me. Um, just had an anniversary post that had 110 comments in a few hours. So that was like, what? You know, Heidi gives wow. you these these great tips to to help keep um, interaction on your on your social media too. Um, for me, um, I am actually I, I call myself a personal introvert, but a professional extrovert. <laughs> so mm -hmm. what I mean is like I'm by nature I'm kind of shy and I stand back, but when the when the painting party happens, I am loving it and I'm on fire. And um, you'll know if you if you love it, then you know keep going even if it feels like you're struggling through it, um, <laughs> even if you're struggling through it, you, you'll make it. You know, I started small and uh, the Lord has really blessed it. I gave it into his hands. I pray over my parties. Um, I can't believe that tomorrow I have a party with 78 people. Um, Yay! <laughs> I'm so grateful uh, for the things that I've been able to do. Um, one of my tips would be really look into fundraisers um, and ask me if you have questions about fundraisers. They That has been one of my number one big things. And I reward the host. The more people you have, the less you pay me per person. 
Um, and so that's just bringing in more and more people. Um, so I have a, a 1K club. So when they make a thousand dollar profit, we make a huge deal of it. And they're part of my 1K club. Um, yeah, like Heidi said, be a member of the Visitors Bureau. They're really, really helpful in getting your name out. I feel super honored to see my name at different places um, because you are you are the paint lady um, and that's what people will call you. <laughs> and that's okay. I like that title. I can live with that. Um, but number one thing I think why people come back is praise them praise them. Okay, they might not be artists at all, but be like, hey, look what you're doing. That's really cool. You know, it's like, let them do their own thing. Let them have fun and just praise people while they're painting. No matter what their age is, I walk around the room and I tell them what a great job they're doing, you know, and, and let them have a fun time at your parties. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Judy, I got a couple things. I got to pull out of this conversation here. Everybody is loving what you said, the personal introvert versus the professional extrovert. <laughs> oh my yes. gosh, that is so well put. So if you are watching right now, let us know if that is you. And um, if you're a personal introvert, but you're a professional extrovert, I people like when I tell them I'm 50, 50, they don't believe me. <laughs> Um, because they seem always as extroverted, but seriously, like if I don't have my time where I remember when I was a teacher and I would teach 850 kids a week and I remember Pixie would, you know, she was riding with me and she'd get in the car and I'd be like, just don't speak. And the poor little girl just wanted to tell me about her day. And I was like, my ears are ringing. I just literally need five minutes of silence or I'm going to explode. Like, because it was so much extrovert for, for, for that day. And so let us know in the comments. And then also we love the 1K Club. Could you explain that a little bit more about what does that mean? Like, how are you doing these fundraisers to where you're still making a profit? Because I'm a big believer if you're doing a fundraiser, I usually like up the $5 for their, their charity. And then I take $5 off. So my price, instead of it being 35 for my profit, it would be 30, but we would charge 40. And then I clearly put $10 of every ticket goes to the fundraiser. How are you doing this to where they're a part of that 1k club? Cause that sounds very fun. Yeah. So I have a set maximum price that I will charge per person. And I know I'm a lot lo lower than what you charge, which is, I mean, I'm rural. This works for our area. It works for me. Um, but I started this because I once had a host tell me, oh, I have, I don't know, did she have eight people come? She's like, oh, I have eight people coming and, and that's okay. It's better than nothing. And to me, I was like, but this is my time. I want a big party. And so I thought, how can I reward the host for having a big party? So I have a bracket, like um, my minimum is 15 people. So 15 to 20 people, it's this maximum price. And then once you have like 21 to 30, I lower it just a couple dollars. And I keep lowering it. I have three different price brackets. And once you have 50 or more people, I take $100 off your bill. And they like hearing mm -hmm. that. Um, and usually when they have 50 people, um, depending what they charge, I let them charge their own ticket price. Um, depending what they charge, then they would make $1,000. So then what would you get off of that? Um, I still... Okay. I'm sorry. I'm bad with numbers really quick. Um, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. So I would still probably get at least $10 a person. Okay. For okay. 50, so 500 or something. But oh, okay. So like, still... like, like profit, profit. Okay. Yeah. I was like, you're still covering your cost, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And that's the thing too. If you get into fundraisers, um, I know some people start paint parties they don't need the money and they're doing this to help other people. And, um, and they're doing this as like, you know, almost like something, you know, we were, we were talking in another meeting right before this about how, you know, what do we want out of life and how a lot of us, you know, we think, Oh, we just want to like go live on a beach and just, you know, swim and listen to the water. But then you go sit on a beach for three or four days and you're bored out of your mind. Like you want to like create or give back. I mean, we were meant to, to serve others. We were meant to help others. And so a lot of us, you know, um, you know, those of you out there, I know I started paint parties because we just needed extra money for bills. And, um, but you know, that was the beginning of that, like, Oh, we just need extra money to help pay the bills. And then it became, 
oh my gosh, this, you know, it took on a, a bigger meaning. And I love how you say you give, you know, you gave this business, you know, to God and you're giving glory to God through your business. And I think that's really important too, for those of y'all that are, are praying, praying um, ladies and gentlemen out there. Like that's one of the biggest things for me was like, this has got to be like led by God because there is so much that we want to do. But for me, I feel like my, my job is to share God's love through art and that's through paint parties and helping others be able to make money through paint parties. And it's like, we can only do so much on our own. And so I love the fact that you really step into fundraisers and you're able to really help a lot of people. And then you also have that fun side to, to bring them into the one K club. It's like, I want to be a part of that. And I don't even like, <laughs> where are you at? So I can just be a part of that and say that because it sounds so fun. So great job. I love all of that. Thanks. Very cool, Judy. Okay, so let's go to Susie. Susie, we're going to have you close this out. First, I want you to just share where you're located and um, so if people want to find you. And then what you've been doing paint parties now for 15 months. So what is your big tip or takeaway for people who are nervous about starting this to just go for it? Okay, so I live in Anaconda, Montana, and my business name is called Rocky Mountain Paint Studio, and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah, and... TikTok, proud of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's been fun. Um, so, I, I would say so. When I what I've learned through PPHQ is there. I love that there's so many ways to create income th through a paint party business. And it can be overwhelming, but overwhelming in a good way. So I would say um, what I did and what helped me out is I um, just kind of grasped on the things that I understood, if, if that makes sense, and just went with it. And then, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I think you had an example, Heidi, about a library, you know, taking certain books that, you know, will help you out. You know, I so I'm doing public and private paint parties right now and paint party kits. I'm um, learning how to do online parties. So I'm trying to grasp that and I'm super excited to, to get to that, that point. But yeah, don't get overwhelmed. Um, mm -hmm. Just, just pause and um, just, you know, take what you're grasping on and, and go with that. So that's helped me out as a new person. Yeah, it has to, it's almost like you have to get used to doing one thing before you can start piling on something else. And there was this, um, so Christy Wright, she's a, a speaker and I was at an event speaking at Brooks event this summer and she was one of the speakers too. And she talked about how like, I'm, okay, so when we go get groceries, let us know in the comments and y'all three wonderful ladies do a raise hand if this is you too. It doesn't matter if we have three bags of groceries from the grocery store or if we have 20. How many of us try to get them all lined up on our arms to make one trip because we're 10 steps from the door, but it does not matter. We're going to try to get them all right. Like it doesn't matter. We still try to grab all of them. And what she said was so good. She said, God never meant for us to have everything on our arms at once. He never meant for us to have it all at once. Although we're only 10 steps from the kitchen. And yeah, Patty says, yep, one trip. I mean, seriously, like what is wrong with us just going in, dropping it and coming back? No, we can't. We got to hold it all. And it legit is, it was just such a great um, visualization, especially for us artists to go like, God didn't me mean for us to, to hold all that weight at once. And it's the same thing with learning paint parties. You know, I can do a paint party now with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back and I'll probably still be able to do it because I've done them for so many years. But then it's like, okay, COVID hits. Now we're, we're doing everything online. Well, it takes a minute. It takes a minute to learn that and to grasp that. But if we're going to all of a sudden just, you know, come in there and go, I'm going to teach paint parties in person. I'm going to do online paint parties. I'm going to do reverse paint party strategy kit. I'm going to do kits. I'm going to do paint by number. I, you know, and all of a sudden we're like, you know, we're just like <laughs> drinking and, and it's overwhelming. And God didn't mean for us to try to learn everything all at once. And 
And so I think that was a great tip, Susie, to just, you know, you're learning. I mean, you're 15 months in and you're learning how to do this. And then you're like, OK, now I got this down. Let me put yeah. something else on there. And I think that's a brilliant way to look at stuff and to to not always think, well, I'm, I'm a, a failure if I don't have everything learned in five seconds, which is what social media will think that we should accomplish, which is not true. <laughs> not true. So that was really good, Susie. Thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh. Kim says that's called a lazy man's load. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patty says, yep. One trip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody earlier asked um, what word of the year means. I'm going to let Amy share what that means real quick, because I know I love word of the year and um, I'm going to let you share for other people who don't know what that is real quick. And then we'll finish up. Okay. That's a great question. I'm glad someone did ask that because I don't even think about it. It's so automatic in me now. Um, there is a book and of course I don't have it right here with me to reference it, but there is a book and it's about choosing your word and what your word would be. It's the driving force that takes you through your next calendar year. So um, when I teach word of the year art, it's about uh, being very fluid and you, you're you picking just colors that speak to you and you're picking images. And we do a lot of tracers and a lot of stenciling to get the imagery on there. Um, but then the word is traced on and it is, uh, they tell me ahead of time, they put a lot of thought into it. And all these Pampered Chef consultants that I tell you about, they've all read this book. Um, I think it's called one word, actually. I just don't remember who the author is. Um, but, and I think one of them's right there behind me. One of my examples, I also have one right next to me. This one is, and it's going to show back or no, it doesn't show backwards. Good. So that one is create because create is my, I, I always say it's my word of all the time. Um, no, not a, of the year or anything behind me. It's qu uh, quite of a distance back there, but that one there, it, believe it's believe. <laughs> and then um, because I teach it so many times, I have multiple words. Um, the group that I did teach it to, I give them the option of the smaller one, 11 by 14, or that one is a 16 by 20. And when they do the 16 by 20, they use it also as a, a way to do kind of a, Oh, what are those called? Those uh, boards that you put all your inspiration boards on. Yeah. Vision so, board. Vision yeah. board. Yep, absolutely. So they will, they'll do their vision board and, um, and I just kind of guide them in how to make it aesthetically pleasing while still being able to convey their messages. Oh my gosh, that is awesome, Amy. Thank you for sharing that. So I all, me and Pixie pick a word of the year every year. We usually do a painting or a vision board with it. Um, Bobby will usually have him pick a word, but he never does like the project with us. But um, I remember one year I was like, I'm going to be athletic. Like I'm not athletic. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be athletic this year. I mean, I did a whole Facebook live on athletic and word of the year. And then it took me like, at two months, I was out, Amy. I was like, so what do you tell people who change their word of the year? Is that like a really bad thing? Because athletic, I had to paint over it. I was so disappointed in myself. You know, um, they do say, and, and it specifically says this in the book, that if you choose your word, you are more likely to keep with the word than if you keep with uh, like a New Year's resolution. Those are gone after a few days. But a word of the year you do tend to keep with longer. Um, if I had someone come to me and say, you know, I just dropped off from it, I'd be like, it's OK. Let's just be more thoughtful with our choice in the next year, um, because I want you to have the success that we all have. And I I mean, like I said, I chose believe and I had it all broken in my head into four quadrants that I was going to make that into my vision board. That one still just says believe on it. I never did the vision board. So uh, to be fair, I don't follow through with all of it either. But I will at least help you get a pretty project in that two to two and a half hours that we're together. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome, Amy. Thank you for your honesty, too. I think sometimes, um, especially all four of us right here, I mean, we are business owners. We are running our companies. And I think sometimes we um, 
we can forget that it's we're human and it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have things that don't always go through. And just like my word of the year athletic <laughs> did not work out, it doesn't mean that now I'm like never going to go for a walk again, or I'm never going to, you know, try something athletic. It just means that that, that wasn't it. And so I want to just real quick, um, you know, from just the success of these ladies and all that they've done, know that wherever you're starting, that it is perfectly okay. And I want you to know that, um, you know, we've all made mistakes in our businesses. We've all made mistakes, I mean, in our life, but that's the greatest thing about life and business and success is we get multiple, multiple chances. You know, it talks about in the Bible, his mercies are new every day. I am so grateful for that because I will jack up a day so bad. And then I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Tomorrow we wake up and we get to start all over again. And I'm so grateful for that. And I think right now, more than ever, you know, whether you're looking for a side hustle or you're trying to find a way to make extra income or you're just wanting to get out there and and get to meet some people and have some friends. You know, I always say I get paid to go hang out with cool people because there ain't boring people at paint parties. These are fun people that like what I like. So I get paid to go get to hang out with cool people. And so wherever you're at, remember, it's a process. This is your paint party adventure. It takes time to get it going, um, but it can actually happen a, a lot faster than you think, especially at the time of year you are watching this. So I just want to take a second to thank Judy, Susie, and Amy for spending some time with us and sharing your wisdom and your beautiful, beautiful smiling faces and your positivity. Um, I appreciate you all so much for being here. And for everybody else that's watching, um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Wherever this paint party adventure is leading you, um, I hope that you're having fun with it. And I hope that you're just having a blast because Again, each day we get to choose how we want to live it. And I'm choosing to live it creatively. I know that Susie, Judy, and Amy is choosing to live it creatively. And I hope you are too. So I hope y'all have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye y'all.